Excellent. Thank you, everybody, for joining either live or, uh, or watching this on YouTube after the fact. This is the March 2022 installment of the Microsoft Data Platform Continuity Virtual Chapter. With me this month is John Deirdre from Microsoft talking about getting started with database, or excuse me, accelerated database recovery. And with that, I'll hand it off to you. Thank you, David. Uh, we'll go ahead and take off here uh, talking about getting started with Accelerated Database Recovery. A uh, great new feature in SQL Server 2019 uh, that you'll really want to implement once you, once you finish the session. You'll probably go back to your company and say, we need to do this. So just a brief introduction of me, uh, Microsoft Customer Engineer at Microsoft. Uh, you can follow me at Twitter, at SQL MCT, my website, my GitHub, SQL MCT. Uh, that's enough about me. So we'll go ahead and get started. I hate talking about myself. So we'll go ahead and get into the fun stuff, which is accelerated database recovery. So this session over the next hour, we will go through uh, first, what is accelerated database recovery? Uh, some of the uh, benefits of using accelerated database recovery. We'll look at what is our current database recovery process, what we've been using for the last 20 years uh, as far as recovering from either uh, failure or there's a long running transaction that we need to roll back. Uh, what, what are we currently uh, handling those processes? And then I'll walk through the four, more, four core components of accelerated database recovery that's been added into our recovery process. And then we'll take those components and I'll walk through a slide on how the process works uh, now or in 2019, once you enable it. You can enable it, it's off by default in SQL Server 2019 on premises. I do have a slide for frequently asked questions that we get normally as we go through the session. So I'm anticipating some of those questions. Uh, we'll have those. And then about half of the session here, or maybe 40 minutes of the session is demonstration. I'm going to show you uh, turning on Accelerate Database Recovery I'll show you a demonstration on deleting data, uh, rolling back data, and comparing and contrasting the current process with the accelerated database recovery process. Uh, and then I'll also have a demonstration for updating because uh, that's probably uh, a little bit slower than our other DML statements or other activities. So that's what we have coming up over the next hour. Uh, I'm very excited. Hopefully you are too. So first off, what is Accelerate Database Recovery? It is a new feature in the SQL Server database engine in 2019, Server 2019. It is available in Azure SQL Database. It is available in Azure SQL Managed Instances uh, and obviously VMs, Azure VMs, if you are using 2019 version that you can enable. The benefits of ADR, from now on, I'm just gonna say ADR, uh, otherwise, uh, the, the session will be an hour, an hour longer if I could just keep saying accelerated database recovery 50 million times. So the main, the benefits or some of the benefits is that there's fast and consistent database recovery. I know where uh, I've tried to restore a database and the longest part of restoring the database is waiting for the recovery process to happen, uh, getting my database back online. Uh, that might take a long time. A lot of times it's, uh, map to my longest active transaction or what my longest active transaction was. So with Accelerate Database Recovery, when they talk about fast and consistent database recovery, we're talking seconds or milliseconds, I should say. We'll see that in a demonstration. Uh, it's the wow factor uh, as we'll go through. Instantaneous transaction rollback. I guess that's more the instantaneous transaction rollback where if a transaction rolls back, as we will see in the demonstration, is happening in milliseconds. Uh, so uh, very, very fast recovery. Aggressive log truncation. Another side benefit is that the main, mainten, maintenance, is easy for me to say, uh, maintaining that transaction log is one of the headaches we run into, especially if we have very long running transactions. Since I don't have to keep track of those long running transactions, or I don't have to keep track of a transaction to the oldest uh, active transaction or that minimal logical sequence number. 
since I don't have to keep track of that anymore, as we'll see through the process, I can aggressively truncate the log. So my transaction logs are going to be smaller, which also means they're going to be smaller if I'm using any uh, high availability features uh, like database mirroring. I know I went a little old school there, uh, but <laughs> anytime I'm doing log shipping or uh, some of the high availability, uh, always on availability groups, thank you. Uh, those logs are going to be much smaller to maintain as well. Um, there's another benefit I don't have on this slide is it reduces the contention on your TempDB database. I need to add that to the slide. I just thought of it. That would be great to add to the slide. I think it's coming up. But how ADR works, it's going to offload a lot of your activity to the TempDB database. That's just a side benefit. Uh, it is available in standard edition. That that sounds like, well, is that actually a benefit? It is. So anybody with standard edition can also uh, use ADR. So it's standard enterprise edition. You don't have to have that more expensive license to use this. All right, click, click on the next slide, John. Thank you. So I just learned how to use PowerPoints apparently. All right, so how to enable ADR, how to turn it on. We'll go in more detail uh, on actually in the demonstration administration walking through and doing this, but in Azure SQL database, Azure SQL managed instance, it's on by default. Uh, you don't have to do anything. That's how much Microsoft likes it. They have it on by default for their backup and restore strategies. Uh, yeah, for backup and restoring strategies. On uh, 2019 and later, to turn, turn it on, alter database, name your database, set, accelerate database recovery equals on. It can't get much easier than that. Now, if you wanted to, you can uh, store your persistent version store, which we've not talked about that yet. It's coming up in about three slides. Uh, the persistent version store is where the magic happens. But you may want to store that persistent version store or PVS. From now on, I'll call it the PVS, persistent version store. You may want to store it into onto its own drive, onto its own file group to separate it from your uh, the rest of your database. You don't have to. If you don't specify uh, where you want to store it, it will default to your primary file group. Uh, but it might be a good practice to move it to its own file group if you wanted to. So you do have that option. So that's how we turn it on. All right. So let's look at the current database recovery process, what we've been using for 20 plus years uh, as our recovery when we're back up or, or not backing up, but restoring and recovering. Uh, this process is officially called the ARIES process, uh, which stands for Algorithms for Recovery and Isolation Exploiting Semantics. Whew, that's a lot to say. Uh, so the ARIES process, the first phase in recovery, this is after you've restored your database or let's say you roll back, uh, you had to roll back a transaction. We're going through the recovery phase. Uh, the first phase is to analyze or determine the current state of our transactions. So from the checkpoint in your transaction log, her voice is in my head, uh, from the checkpoint or oldest dirty page uh, logical sequence number, I'll analyze basically my active data in the transaction log or my active transactions in the uh, transaction log to determine the state of each transaction when the system stopped. Uh, so at the point of time of failure, go back to the oldest checkpoint. Let's analyze uh, what statements are currently active. At that point, we go through the redo phase. The redo phase goes back to the oldest uncommitted transaction, or more specifically, the oldest active transaction to the minimal log sequence number, goes all the way back to that and replays any transactions that have been successful or needs to be committed, it'll write that back to the database to make sure my data is in a consistent state. At this phase, my database, I'll have a lock. I'll have a lock on that database so people can't access it while I'm trying to recover. Actually, that happens as I do the know, as I start the redo phase, I'll have a lock on the database. But at this phase, once, once I finish the redo phase, I still can't have full access to the database. Now they have partial access to the database until I go through and perform my undo statement. 
uh, or before not statement, sorry, my undo phase. This is where we slow down. This is where we gr our, our server grinds to a halt uh, during the recovery process because I have to undo any uncommitted transactions all the way back to the oldest uncommitted yeah. transaction, the oldest uncommitted active transaction. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, which could be if that transaction, if it's a bulk import that had been running for three or four hours, and there's a, you know, we, we run into those situations where we need to import a lot of data and we're importing uh, three, four, 12 hours uh, data. Then if something happens and I need to roll that back, it's going to take that, that long to roll back, uh, to go all the way back to that oldest uncommitted transaction. Plus my transaction logs are probably huge having to maintain all that activity, all the active VLFs within the log. I have to maintain all that. So this is where we hang up during the, our current recovery process. And this is where we're going to solve the issue with accelerated database recovery. We're fixing the undo phase of the process. So that is our current database recovery process. I'll show you the ADR process here in just a moment. But first, Let's look at our components, the components that are available. Oh, not yet, I forgot this slide. So with the current recovery process, uh, some common implications, I think I actually already mentioned this as we was going through the slide, but uh, our recovery time with our current process, our recovery time is roughly proportional to that longest running transaction. Like I said, if I was uh, importing data that's been taking, doing a bulk import that was taking a long time, uh, rolling that back, since it, since it wasn't committed, I have to roll the, that transaction back. So it's going to take a very long time. It's roughly proportional to the amount of time it, it was running originally. Uh, it does take a long time. I guess that says the exact same thing. And uh, I run into transaction log issues. I think I mentioned that as well, that if I have very long, tra uh, very long transactions, there may be cases that I run into error 9002, one of my favorite errors, that uh, the transaction log is full. Uh, hopefully you don't run into that very often, but if you do, uh, obviously that, that's a headache that we run into. So some of the issues we run into currently with that process, that's going to be fixed with ADR. Now we'll look at the four core components of ADR. The persistent version store, logical revert, the special log or secondary log, depending on which documentation you read, and then the cleanup. We're gonna bring in the cleanup. Uh, so first we'll look at persistent version store. This is a version store. Uh, it's gonna store versions of my records. And this is where, or this is basically the magic, is that instead of having to write, or I'm gonna write the data into the transaction log, if I'm gonna persist the row versions, uh, in the database or within that P PBS, which also offloads all my row versioning uh, off of the TempDB. As I mentioned, uh, one of the another side benefit we get with ADR is that I offload concurrency issues with the TempDB since TempDB is shared with all the other databases. Now my database mm -hmm. basically has its own version store. It doesn't have to share that version store with everyone else. Uh, each version of a row will have the previous state of the data and the transaction ID of that version. So it can compare and contrast what was the previous version of that row and what's the current version of the row. The fast undo is when I need to undo those row versions, instead of having to roll back the active transaction, instead of having to go, if I was inserting 10,000 records and during that process of rolling back, I had to roll back each of those 10,000 rows uh, to put them back into a consistent state in our current practice. But with the persistent version store, I don't have to roll back each individual part of that transaction. I just look at the version row and say, uh, mark this transaction as aborted, go to the previous version, which takes about a millisecond to do that, as opposed to going through 10,000 or 100,000 uh, rollbacks uh, to roll back part of a very long transaction. So that's very exciting. That's, that's where the, the secret sauce is. Now you might think, you might think, you might think that uh, 
over time, this persistent version store is going to get very, very, very huge because I'm keeping track of all my versions. And if I have you know, a, a table that has a billion records, which is not that uncommon, or a million or a billion or trillions of records, that persistent version store is going to get huge. Um, I jumped ahead. That's where the cleaner comes in. I jumped ahead a couple, couple uh, objects. The cleaner goes through uh, and goes through and cleans up all those stale records, any of the records that have been marked aborted. So I'm actually going to jump, let me jump ahead to that one since I went out of order. So the cleaner is an asynchronous process that goes through and cleans up those real versions that are not needed. So any of the versions that have been marked as aborted that uh, during a recovery process, I don't need them. And you'll actually see those rows uh, cleaned up very, very fast. Actually, part of, part of my, de during my demonstration, if I don't show you the persistent version store in about two seconds or five seconds of ap after rolling back, the cleaner comes in and cleans up the rows where we don't even see that it happened. That's how fast the cleaner goes through and makes sure that persistent version store is a manageable. Uh, so if I don't need the row versions, the cleaner goes through and cleans up. All right. So I jump back to the ones I jumped over. I was thinking logical revert there for a second. Uh, so our persistent version store is what's storing a version of each record. The logical revert uh, is an asynchronous process that performs row level version undoes. So this is actually the, uh, the item that keeps track of the aborted transactions and performs a rollbacks using uh, the recent committed transactions from the PBS. And it's also what releases a lock. Now this one, this part, the logical revert doesn't make much sense here, but when we get to the, um, go through the process of ADR, how it works. Uh, I'll show you exactly where this piece comes in. But as part of, during the undo phase, the undo phase of logical revert goes through and, and it's the one that goes, well, these rows uh, were aborted. So let's just uh, go back to the previous version and then release the locks. Remember our current status, my lock is going to be on that database until I'm completely done with the undo, the entire undo phase. With the logical revert, it's going to immediately release locks. So another benefit of ADR, reducing contention on uh, locking <clears throat> or reducing uh, yeah, contention on locking and immediately give me access to that database. Uh, the other, the third part, the third of four is the secondary or special log. Again, depending on the documentation you read. This is an in-memory log stream that keeps track of all my non-versioned operations. So the PBS keeps track of all versioned, like insert, update, deletes, if I'm performing those activities, create, alter, drop, your DML, DDL statements. Uh, that's maintaining the persistent version store. But what about non-versioned operations? Like uh, I acquired a lock or I'm invalidating metadata cache, anything that's not ver a version of a row. Um, I'm just going to keep track of that information in memory. So again, I don't have to keep it on the transaction log. I'm storing it in memory. So when I roll back, I immediately just go to the log and say, what are the, oper the non-version operations that we either need to redo or undo? So it accelerates that process by only needing to process the non-version operation. Uh, so that's, that's pretty nice. Uh, it is the S log is persisted to disk uh, during a SQL checkpoint. So whenever I do a checkpoint, the S log is written to disk. So in case of failure, I, I have that S log. All right, so those are our components. I mentioned the cleaner already, a synchronous process to maintain the size of our PBS. That's normally a question I get, but John, that PBS is gonna get huge. It's gonna be very large. It, it, it is possible still, but you're also now saving space your TempDB, you're saving space, uh, your transaction logs, you're saving space, and your cleaner is going through and going through and cleaning up your persistent version store. We'll see that in the demonstration coming up. All right, so here's the recovery process we'll walk through. Uh, we'll talk about some recovery time comparison, uh, our frequently asked questions, and then we'll get into the demonstration. So just to kind of show you where we're walking. 
uh, or where we're going to. Okay. So ADR, the new process, once I've enabled ADR in my system. The analysis phase is pretty much the same, where I do the reg uh, regular analysis, analyze from the checkpoint, the most recent checkpoint uh, in the transaction log, uh, analyze that and then reconstruct the S log. Basically, uh, look at the S log to find my non versioned operations. Then my redo phase is now broken up into two parts, where the redo phase is to look at those non version operations since my oldest uncommitted transaction and roll those forward. Since that's in memory, that's going to be very, very fast. I don't have to read those from the log anymore to redo those. So any, any non-version operations, uh, I take directly from the S-log or directly from memory. So my redo, fa redo phase part 2B, 2B or not 2B, uh, this, in this case, I only need to look from the last checkpoint in the transaction log. Again, another reason why my transaction log can now be smaller, because I really only need the activity since the last checkpoint. Uh, everything before that checkpoint I'm gonna have uh, in the row version or the persistent version store. So the redo phase, uh, I'll redo, redo the transaction log, any of the, uh, any of the activity that's happened since the last checkpoint, and I'm now fully available. I haven't done the undo phase yet. So another great benefit, I'm immediately releasing, releasing the locks after the redo phase, more specifically uh, part of the logical revert, is releasing the locks, we're ready to go. People can access the database uh, because we have the database and we have the previous versions. We know what the different versions are because they're stored in the PDS. Uh, now the undo phase. The undo phase, again, uh, anything that happened before the checkpoint is either going to be in the persistent version store or in the S-log memory. So anything in the persistent version store that logical revert looks at it and says, okay, look at the previous version. If there's transactions that have been marked as aborted, don't read those. We don't need those. So just go back to the previous version. So again, I only need to go through and say, okay, what was the previous version? I don't have to roll back individual parts of the transaction, which means I can recover less than a second uh, because all I really need to do is just read uh, what was active since the last checkpoint, which probably wasn't that long ago. So that is magic. That is magic. I have a chat thing over here. The chat thing was, if you have questions, please drop them here and we'll get them answered as soon as we can. All right. Thank you. <laughs> so that was in the chat box. I had to read it. All right, so that is the recovery process. And that's where our components jump in. The persistent version store, the S log, and the logical revert. The one part that's not on the slide is the cleaner because it works in the background to keep my PVS small. Uh, PVS, did I say it right? Sometimes I say PFS because I think PFS pages and I get into a different class. I mean PVS, not PFS, if I accidentally say that. PVS. All right. Now, if you'd like to go in even more detail than that picture, where did I get that picture? Where did I get this chart? All this information is in a white paper. I've got the link there on the slide. Um, you, can, I mean, you can get the slides and my demo code off my GitHub, github.com slash SQLMCT. Look under the folder. It's actually under SQL Performance Tuning. There's a folder called Accelerated Database Recovery that has my slides and the demonstration code that I'm gonna show you in just a moment. Uh, but this white paper, uh, you can actually search it, Constant Time Recovery. That's what its original name was before it became Accelerated Database Recovery. Uh, Constant Time Recovery, this white paper, I believe it was around 2017. There's about eight or nine people that contributed to it. Um, but here they actually have a comparison on how fast or what's our recovery time using ADR. So I always, again, I always got the question uh, when I first started delivering this uh, back 2019 when ADR came out, I always had the question, is it really faster? Is it really? Well, someone did the analysis, so I didn't have to. They did the testing. And you actually find all the testing on that link, the constant time recovery in SQL Server. 
So on the left-hand side is an example of recovery time without CTR or accelerated data-based recovery. On the right-hand side is recovery time with CTR. They look the same, but this is also an example of a bad visual or how not to put charts onto a presentation. But that was the picture that was in the white paper, so I added it in so I can also complain about bad visualizations. But this, but this chart on the right, you can see the time in seconds goes up to 3,000 seconds. The chart on the right, its peak is at 15 seconds. So this is not an apples and oranges comparison between the two uh, charts. Uh, because uh, if we actually did try to compare, we wouldn't even see this, this 15 seconds, we wouldn't even be able to compare it. It'd be so minuscule on that chart on the right-hand side. It'd be way down here, way down here. So uh, the recovery time, the different phases. So if you were inserting 10 million rows, 50 million rows, 200 million rows, uh, how long does it typically take? Or when they were doing the uh, samplings or test, testing, stress testing, thank you. Uh, the stress testing, and you can see the differences. Uh, the big one is you can see updates, 200 million updates. It is going to take a little bit longer, and we'll talk about that in a, in a moment. But you can kind of see, compare and contrast uh, the difference. I mean, even the very slowest, for some reason, their deletes, uh, the deletes of uh, with ADR, 10 million deletes for some reason no, last year. Oh, Oscar, you got your mic on. Oscar, over, Roger, Oscar. So uh, you can see even the slowest activity with ADR is less than 15 seconds. Uh, so much faster, very extremely faster. That was proper grammar there. If you'd like to, again, if you'd like to get that documentation and go into the details, Google search constant time recovery on SQL Server. I think the white paper is about 20 pages. That's a very interesting read. It will help you go to sleep if you're having sleeping problems. All right, so here is our frequently asked questions I typically get. Uh, again, when I first started delivering this, we always had these questions, so I did the research for you beforehand. Uh, question number one, will my database be larger? Since I'm storing everything, uh, I have a persistent version store that's stored in my database, will my database be, be larger? Yes, it's gonna be larger uh, because I am storing that extra information or uh, I have that information in the persistent version store. But compared to the benefits of ADR, the, I can afford the storage. And again, according to that CTR white paper, uh, 50 million modifications is going to add one gig to your database. That's, that's I can afford one gig, <laughs> an extra one gig of space for 50 million modifications. Uh, I, hopefully I can afford that um, because the benefits of being able to instantaneously recover is going to far outweigh whatever one gig cost, which is probably, I think at this point, two bucks. I don't know what it is now. <laughs> Oh, well, it's not that cheap, but you get the idea. Does it affect your performance? Yes, or I should say, it depends. There's a SQL Server answer, it depends. Uh, it depends on the workloads. So write heavy OLTP workloads are more susceptible, specifically updates. Updates take longer, especially if you have indexes. Inserts and deletes are just inserting and deleting rows. So there's not that much overhead. When I insert and delete, I'm just marking the previous row um, as, as a boarded, but uh, updates is going to be heavier. So you are going to get an impact there. Uh, can it, according to that white paper, is going to increase your CPU utilization by 13.8%. So you are going to have to factor that in. But again, does that offset the benefit of being able to recover your recovery time objective, uh, getting your database back online as quick as possible? in seconds as opposed to hours. Uh, how is PBS different than the version store in TempDB? And PBS is part of the user database, so it's gonna offload. Uh, a lot of though your contention with, uh, contention with other users, other databases with the TempDB. 
but it's also going to another side benefit is if you have snapshot or recommended snapshot isolation on for your transactions in your environment, it's going to reduce a lot of your concurrency, a lot of your locking issues. That's just an added side benefit. Uh, what about availability groups since we are in the uh, continuity virtual user group? Uh, PBS and log records replicate to secondaries. So PBS is part of the database. The transaction logs are part of the database. Uh, it's still going to replicate over to the secondary uh, server. Uh, and the secondary communicates oldest versions that are needed uh, to the primary. So what's the oldest version of the records do I need from the secondary to the primary? And ADR can speed up failover because of that fast undo process. So now I'm also speeding up failover uh, because uh, my transaction logs are much smaller. Uh, replaying those logs uh, are much smaller. I'm ready to go much faster. Uh, there is a side thing. Uh, the secondary must be restarted without, or sorry, when the, when the secondary server, if it ever needed to be restarted without ADR, uh, the TempDB is lost. So any of those versions that were in the TempDB could also be lost uh, and queries must wait for the data to commit from the primary. But with ADR, since the versions are in that persistent version store, since they're persisted, there's no delay. So it's going to speed up that process of uh, failing over. Pretty awesome. And all these side benefits we're getting. So what's the downside? I keep saying, look at all these side benefits. The downside there is you're going to have more update or more CPU utilization for update workloads. So if you're just reading, uh, inserting, deleting, it 2.4% it for normal workloads. But if you have a lot of updates, you might see more activity on your, uh, on your server. That's really the biggest downside though. Uh, and an extra, the extra space there. All right. So I promised a demo. Dun, 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 dun. It's demo time. It's demo time. Questions? Oh, we get to the demo. All right. Uh, this demonstration code is available on my GitHub slash SQLMCT under the performance tuning folder. There's a folder that says Accelerate Database Recovery. I will point out there's a small glitch in my demonstration today uh, dealing with the file groups. For some reason, my syntax is not working. Uh, I'll walk through and I'll show it to you, but uh, uh, it's being, being cranky. It's worked the last 100 times I've run the code. For some reasons today, it's not working correctly. Uh, I'll troubleshoot it at some point in the future. Okay. So to start off with, I'm just going to build a brand new database called ADR Demo uh, because I'm very original with my names. And I'm going to drop it just in case it exists. I'm going to put this on my D drive, which is just an SSD drive on my local machine. I'm also going to then create a file group that if my file group part of this demo is working, uh, I would store my persistent version store in that additional file group. And I always get the question, John, why are you putting the file group on the same drive? Because I only have that other drive. Uh, maybe one day in the future, I'll buy a drive just for that. Okay. So in a world environment, you probably have a drive. You probably could or most likely have a drive or carve out some storage space uh, for that persistent file group. Uh, but I'm running off my laptop here. So uh, that's our demo. Okay. So that's just setting up the demonstration, setting up a database, uh, setting up an additional file group. Uh, I don't know why I separated that out separately, but I did. Uh, now I'm going to switch my compatibility level for that database to pre-2019. Just to show you another side benefit. This is available in 2019, but you can also do it on previous versions. Uh, as you see, I'm going to 140, which I believe is SQL Server 2017. I always mess up my versions. Uh, so I'm going to alter the database. And now I'm going to check my compatibility level. I'm going to check the setting is accelerated database recovery on. It shouldn't be because I just built that database. So it is not on because I just built the database. My compatibility level is uh, I'm almost positive that's 2017. I'm sure someone will correct me if I was wrong. Next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to create a table 
uh, create a table and insert 750,000. We're going to do that. 750,000 records. That's just going to have a random number between one and 10,000. And then my initials JD insert and then today's date. Uh, so I just did that. It took about three seconds. It's not too bad. I'm going to create a non-clustered index so it speeds up searching those 750,000 records. That's also going to slow down my updates a little bit later. So by creating the index, it's going to speed up my reads, slow down my writes. But that's true with that with ADR without. And right, so I'm going to look at the data. I'm going to look at it right now. I don't know why I put that in capital letters. So I have 750,000 records taking three, four, five. So you can see I just inserted that at four, 1,436 minutes. So that's 236. Uh, inserted 750,000, took about 12 seconds. So ran, random number, JD insert. So we know we inserted the data and it's 236. Remember that because we're gonna revert back to 236, uh, the time or 1,436. Uh, John, hey John. So delete records from the table, how long does it take? So I'm gonna set statistics time on so I, I can see how long this is going to take. I guess I should, let me do this first because it's gonna take a moment. Uh, I'm gonna delete all those records. Notice I have a begin transaction. I do not have a commit because I have commitment issues. I need to take a drink real quick. Um, I don't have a commit because I wanna roll it back coming up. Uh, and I don't wanna commit because I wanna show the recovery process, what happens when bad things happen. When bad things happen to good administrators. Uh, so I'm deleting, it's taking we're about 29 seconds now. 30, 32, should be about done any moment now. It hardly ever goes over 40 seconds. 39, whew, all right, oh, I hit 40 seconds. Uh, I haven't figured out, for some reason, started doing this today too, <laughs> where I'm getting, as it says statistics, I'm getting multiple results, multiple of these back. And I just keep adding and adding and adding. Uh, so I'll figure that out at some point, sometime in the future. All right, so I'm gonna copy, so deleting those records, right now we do not have ADR on. So deleting those records took CPU time about 13 seconds. The elapsed time, elapsed time was about 40 seconds. So I'm gonna copy that. Copy, John, copy. And I'm gonna paste it down, was it line 103? So we can compare it a little bit later. Uh, so when we do it uh, without ADR, what was it? It's about 40 seconds. I need to rebuild my I need to rebuild my instance. Uh, my machine's getting slower. Maybe that's part of it. My my, uh, uh, I've been demoing so much on this laptop for the last four years that I'm getting demons. Okay, so let's look and verify that the records were deleted. Uh, so remember, I began the transaction. I deleted. I'm not committed. I'm not committed. There's not been a checkpoint. I've not done a commit. So do did the records get deleted? They did. So I inserted them and then deleted them. So let's look at our checkpoints. So I got some code here. I'm gonna write a checkpoint to uh, have a checkpoint written. And we're gonna check the size of my transaction log before and after the checkpoint uh, to see what the size are. Size is, size is. Uh, let me execute. And without ADR, we can see the size before and after the checkpoint is exactly the same. 741 meg, the log space usage is actually a little bit more because I had to put an entry in there for the checkpoint. So uh, without ADR, the transaction log is going to stay that size because I have to keep track of that delete statement because it's technically still active. I began the transaction, I'm not committed or rolled back. So in case 10 hours from now, I need to do a recovery process, I'll have to recover roll back all the way back to that delete statement because I've not committed because I'm a bad developer. Okay. Uh, so now I'm going to roll back. Uh, this is going to take, this should take, and actually it doesn't take as long as I thought it would. Um, since it took 40 seconds to delete the records, how long does it take to roll back? You would think it would take the same 40 seconds. It actually does it a little bit faster uh, as we'll see in a second. Uh, about 14 seconds. Uh, and again, this is still without, this is still without uh, uh, ADR on. 
we're going to copy that and paste it down to line 133 so we can compare and contrast. So without ADR, how long did it take to roll back? All right, so let's scroll back up. Uh, we roll back. Let's check, to our, is our records back? I'm bringing data back. So here's our data. Our data's back, uh, and it was restored back to 1436 or 236, because that's the when I inserted the records, not 240 or 237 or whenever I deleted them. So it reverted. I did roll back the, it worked like it was supposed to. Okay. Uh, next thing is I'm now going to turn on Accelerate Database Recovery. This is a part um, that I mentioned that my code is not, if you guys can check real quick, do you see anything wrong there with the syntax? Let me execute. I'm getting a syntax error and I don't know why. I just started this morning. This worked last week, literally, and it worked a hundred times before. So if you want to store your persistent version store into that another file group, you can do that. I created it up above, but since I'm getting some weird syntax error thing there, um, I'm missing a comma space. I don't even see it, uh, but that's how I would do it if it was working for me today. But I'm going to go ahead and just turn on uh, the accelerated database recovery. We're going to turn it on and it will just store the persistent version store. You guys are over there. Persistent version store in, in the primary file group. You can put it into secondary file or sorry, uh, separate file group. For some reason I have a syntax error there and I need to troubleshoot. Okay. So now that I turned it on, we're going to check our compatibility level. Uh, still 140. So 2017 version of SQL. Database recovery is on. We have a new uh, dynamic management view. We love our dynamic management views. This one is going to check the stats of my persistent version store for this database ID ADR demo. So I'll execute. And I currently do not have anything in my PBS. And I currently do not have any aborted transactions because I just turned it on. Uh, I just turned it on. All right. So now we're going to go through this process again. I'm going to go through and delete those records from that table. So I'll go ahead and execute. Remember the first time it took 40 seconds to delete uh, with ADR, is it really going to affect the time? Uh, that's the time from the last time I ran this demo code with ADR. Uh, let's see what it is this time. Um, it's, it's different every single time. So that's why I need to compare and contrast. And it took, it was a little bit faster to delete records. Just a little bit faster. Let's compare and contrast. Um, so a little bit faster, mainly because I'm storing, I said to mark the, uh, 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 the different, or just added the different versions in the persistent version store and then the uh, locks and everything in the non-version and the S-log. That's what I was trying to think of. So you can see the time, it's a little bit faster. CPU time is more, but the last time is a little bit quicker. Okay. Let's check our checkpoint before and after, or what's the space used by the transaction log. Remember, check the transaction log usage before. It's a lot smaller because all non-version operations, you know, if I read my notes, it probably would have been helpful are in the S log version information of each of those deletes are in the PBS. So the transaction log only has activity since the last checkpoint, which before the, last, before the checkpoint, after the checkpoint. Remember previously, I don't know if you remember 10 minutes ago, when we did this without the accelerated database recovery, the size of the transaction log before and after was 741 megabytes. And it was using about 95% in both situations. In this case, before the checkpoint, the size of the log is 464 meg um, because any non-versioned operation is in the S-log, version information is, being, is in the PVS. After I ran the checkpoint, I don't need to keep track of anything before the checkpoint because version information is in the PVS, uh, non-version information is in the secondary log in memory. So use active or aggressive truncation of that transaction log. Okay. We'll look at the PVS. 
Uh, let's look back in the persistent version store. We'll see its size is about 82 meg because it has to keep track of all those deletes or is keeping track of all the versions of those rows. The previous version where I had the rows and then the, uh, the version where I deleted the rows. i have not currently aborted any of the transactions because I've not done a rollback. We did the begin transaction delete, but we've not committed, we've not rolled back. We just did a checkpoint. So let me roll back. This part is amazing. This will shock you. You can already see here the previous times I've done it. So it's gonna happen so fast, I have to talk about it. So now I'm gonna do the rollback. This is the big magic thing. I did a little Lewis Black there. Look at that, one millisecond. It took one millisecond, it was even faster this time. So if I compare and contrast from the last time I, from the last time tab, oh, it's gonna drive me crazy. I know I put spaces, uh, it doesn't even line up right, does it? Uh, so uh, I got extra CPU time. One millisecond as opposed to 14 seconds. And that was only 750,000 records that I deleted. Imagine if you will, that there was a lot more. All right. Oh man, I, man, I talked too long. Uh, check that the records are available. Check that the records are available. Uh, they are back to the JD insert or that they're there. And I talked too long uh, for this part. Actually, I have to pin wait till the select statement selects all 750,000 records. Hmm. I said I talked too long because I might have mentioned this. Remember the cleaner goes through and makes sure my persistent version store. Oh, no, it's still there. Okay. Uh, it hasn't happened yet. So my persistent version store uh, it still has those version records. And now I do have an aborted transaction because I rolled it back. I, so I can keep track of how many transactions, how, how many have rolled back during the recovery process. Now the cleaner is going to come up and go through and clean up those stale records, specifically all those deletes, the 750,000 versions of the deleted row that were marked as aborted, the cleaner is going to go through and clean that up. Uh, run it again. There you go. Um, they went through, as I was talking there in the last 10 seconds, went through and cleaned up all the stale records. I didn't do anything else. I wasn't doing anything. Uh, I ran this code. We saw it was at 80 meg. I thought I'd I was, I was running close where I was talking too long uh, from when I did the rollback and actually checked the persistent version store. It was at 80 meg. And during the time I was showing you it was 80 meg, something happened in the background uh, or the cleaner in the background asynchronously went through and cleaned up the persistent version store. It went from 80 meg down to 0.07 and it cleaned up all those, the, the aborted transaction. I don't need that information anymore. There's no reason to keep it. I don't need to roll back that activity because I have the previous versions. It's so excited. What about the transaction log? The Yogi, what about the Ranger? Uh, now that I did the, the cleaner went through, we did the rollback. What's the size of the transaction log uh, before and after the checkpoint? Remember now I only need to keep track of activity since the last checkpoint. You remember with ADR, uh, it was 741 meg. I couldn't do the active or aggressive trans uh, truncation of the transaction log. I had to keep everything, all that activity to the last oldest active transaction, all those to roll back, all those deletes that I had. I'm using 24 meg now as opposed to 741 meg. That's amazing. All these side benefits we get. Uh, I already did this one. It did go through and clean up. So I went through and cleaned up the PBS, the cleaner. Bring in the cleaner. Okay. So that was dealing with deletes. Hey, John, what about updates? What about updates? Uh, it's basically the same thing. I'm going to turn off ADR. I'm going to turn it off just so we can see an update before. Uh, we'll see updates. Um, no, we'll, see, we'll see updates. I forgot what I was talking about. Uh, what's the activity with the update? So it is off. Is it different between deletes and inserts? It is. So let me go through. I'm going to update the records and put in instead of random number JD insert. I'm going to update all 750,000 rows to update no ADR. And I'm going 
to take a drink during this process because it's going to take about 30, 40 seconds to do that update. As I mentioned, uh, updates are going to take longer. And this is kind of an example of that because I have to update all those records, I also have to go update that index. Um, actually, it should be about the same. So I'm updating all 750,000 records and I'm stalling as I've got about 10 more seconds. If this had been a recorded video, I'd go doo -doo 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 -doo. but it's not a recorded video, so I'm not gonna do that. So here we are into about 44, there we go. What was it, uh, 44? seconds. I'm going to copy and paste that down to compare and contrast. What line do I need? 221? Two, actually, it's 220. Uh, I need to fix that in my code. Apparently, I deleted a, a line at some point. Okay. So 221. So that took, what did I say, 44 seconds? It says down there, 44 seconds. Uh, were the records updated? They were. Now they say update, no ADR, and it's now 251 as a opposed to 236. Was that one we originally did, if I remember correctly, way back when? Let's check our transaction log uh, before and after the checkpoint. It's huge. Well, huge for this example. I was like, John, that's not really that big. For this example, for, it is. Okay. So that was pretty big. So let's roll back. This is going to take, this is going to take about, was it 44 seconds to do the update? Should take about 20. 25 seconds to roll that back. And again, we're just dealing with 750,000 records in a larger environment. If I've been inserting a million, million, million records or billions of records, these, this recovery time is going to be a lot longer, both the performing the activity, but rolling back, rolling back the activity. Now we're doing the rollbacks but this also is your recovery or your recovery process when you're doing the restore. Uh, this is, uh, I, uh, you have the recovery process during a restore. So how quickly can you restore? So how long did that take? I meant to, it took 30, almost 30, 31 and a half seconds. So I don't have, uh, I don't have the thing to type it down there. We'll put it right, I know, a little bit further down. But yeah, okay, I don't see it anywhere. To compare contrast. But we do know it took uh, 30, 31 and a half seconds. Okay. Was that where was that? Okay, we just did the rollback. Uh, did the records revert back? We went back to the JD insert. Okay. So now, once SQL lets me execute, because I'm still selecting the 750,000 records, now I'm going to turn ADR back on. Uh, accelerated database recovery equals on. There you go. Turn that on. We're gonna check, is it on? And remember, I am compatibility level 140. So technically this database is version 2017. So it's a 2019 feature for the database engine that I can enable it, but it is working on a uh, 2017 database. Okay. So now I'm gonna update again, uh, execute. It's gonna take about 30 some seconds with ADR. So just to kind of show that it does, uh, you're going to get uh, some CPU utilization hits with, um, with the update statements. We can kind of see that here previously where it was 20 seconds CPU time previously. The last time we don't see much difference, but the CPU time you're gonna see a difference. So hopefully this will come back. We're at 27, 28, uh, 32, 34. 36, hut, hut, hike. So we are seeing a significant hit on the update, uh, update statement. So I did want to show you that this is the downside to ADR. That if you're doing a lot of updates, you're going to get some, some hit on your CPU utilization. So let's compare and contrast. Uh, I think the white paper said 13.8%, but if I compared, Previously, when I did it without ADR, did uh, the update took 20 seconds. Now it takes 38 seconds. So that's that's a big uh, that was a big hit in this case. The last time was not that much difference, but the CPU time uh, a little bit more with the utilization there. So that's the downside. If you have a lot of updates, it might be something to look into. 
and compare am I are these all these other benefits that the, the concurrency issues fixed or a lot of concurrency issue transaction log size recovery speed instantaneous recovery uh, can I handle the slow updates for all of those other benefits okay uh, let's check our transaction log remember earlier it was like 1600 uh, there was 1600 megabytes. Now it's down to 261 before and after the checkpoint. If I check the persistent version store, about 81 meg. I'm going to roll back. How long does it take to roll back? Boop. I didn't, it didn't even hit zero milliseconds. So previously, uh, when we rolled back, I think it was 44 seconds. Uh, 44 seconds to do the rollback for the Roll back the uh, delete or no, the up, roll back the updates. Uh, this time with ADR took zero milliseconds. They couldn't even time it. It happened so fast. And then my persisted version store will eventually, uh, right now it's 81. Eventually that will clean up. We'll come back and look at it. I'll check the transaction log again. And you can see it's down to five meg. How much space am I using in that transaction log? I haven't done any, I didn't truncate the log. I haven't backed up the log. I haven't done anything with the transaction log. This is the cleaner, uh, or not the cleaner, but really, yeah, the cleaner going through and cleaning up the, uh, the information, but all my version records uh, are in the persistent version store. Non-version information is in the S log. So my transaction log, how quick is that going to replicate over to your secondary? Probably pretty quick, much faster than 1600 megs. All right. So you have less activity there. Let's go back. Did the cleaner come through and clean up my PBS? Not yet. He will. He will eventually. All right. So that was the most amazing demonstration ever. I do apologize for that one line not working. Uh, I'm probably missing a, I checked. I'm not missing a comma or anything. But that was Accelerate Database Recovery. Uh, are there any questions? Wow, that was almost an hour exactly. I'm getting good at this game. Uh, yeah, that was spot on at an hour. That's fantastic. <laughs> yeah. Uh, if anybody has any questions, please drop them into the chat window or honestly, you can come off the mute now and ask. Um, honestly, I had a few, but you answered them right there at the end. You know, what's the performance overhead? Um, you know, the space consumption, how long does it take to clean up? Um, so we got a question here. Uh, let's see. Does SQL Server make the database available for reads before it makes it ready for writes? I don't, I'll tell you, I don't know if you know, David, uh, I don't think this is actually an ADR question. I think it's first come first serve, whoever hits the uh, database. I uh, think so. Yeah. I, I, I don't know. Yeah. That's uh, a really good question. <laughs> I don't think there's like one over the other. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Dina. I don't think, uh, SQL. But they were partially available. What do you mean by partially available? Oh, partially available. Um, with, um, oh, okay. I, I'm with you now. <clears throat> That's in our current situation where, let me go back to that slide. Uh, this is in our current scenario where it's partially available, mm -hmm. where some people can possibly access the database to perform reads. Um, but you wouldn't have, uh, other activities with the database at that, at that part. Uh, because part of the database is, or it's going to be locked out as I'm trying to recover. As I'm yeah, because we haven't usually can't get into it until it's done recovering. And I yeah. didn't know if that was different with the ADR, because I remember seeing it somewhere in a demo. It's like, oh, it makes it available for read first, but before it does writes. Yeah. And that could in, be a uh, big issue for us if it does that. Yeah. Oh, well, th this is the, the current database process does that. Right. Where it, like with. We well, said uh, it kind of follows the same process. Or no. I'm sorry, I thought you said somewhere that it kind of follows the same process, but it oh. does it differently. Uh, it, I misunderstand. It, is, it actually releases, it's actually a lot faster. It follows the process through the analysis phase. Okay. But if we can, we'll look at both of them here real quick. During the right. redo with our current process, I'm going to place a lock on that database. Right. And you're, most of the times when I'm recovering, it's very rare I can actually get to the database until yeah. it's done. What are you going to do? Uh, 
The application forward. can't, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. So yeah, in most cases you can't. Uh, apparently, there's some way you well some, some ways you can connect in, but the with ADR, as soon as I do the redo, all the locks are released, so I'm immediately okay. Available. Okay, that's what I missed. So I don't have to I don't have to wait on the undo phase. So that's going to speed up. I'm immediately uh, reminding. I even see where it says recovery pending. It just oh, we're we're ready. You're ready to write your queries now. Awesome. That's any cool. other questions? That's a good question. Yeah, that's fantastic. Yeah, does anybody else have any other questions or thoughts or anything at all? Okay. Uh, John, do you want to pop up your contact info on the screen? Uh, do I have to? No, you don't have to. Unless you Everybody want to start mailing. Right? No. <laughs> <laughs> now, this is for folks that if you're watching this session after the fact on YouTube, if you do have any questions, uh, honestly, reach out to him, reach out to me. Uh, you know, we want to we're, we're here to help. We want to make sure that we answer all of your questions, even if you're watching this later on. Uh, and that goes on to kind of a second topic. If you are interested in a, a session you haven't seen us present yet, if there's anything that we can do to answer some questions, or quite frankly, we're happy to create sessions based on questions that you have, let us know. We're happy to do this. So on behalf of everybody, thank you all for attending. Thank you for watching After the Fact. Uh, thank you, John, for presenting. This is awesome. Uh, I can't wait to continue to play with this. I, I actually just spun up six VMs in my lab today, and I'm going to spin this up on all of them just so I can abuse the heck out of it. Six? Six VMs? Yep. Uh, Only six today. Only six today. Uh, I think it broke my automation, so I want to do more. But <laughs> Awesome. Well, thank you very much. Uh, and for those of you watching, we will see you all next month. I'll go ahead and stop the recording now.